Chronicles from Gorgoron, Chapter 1 The Ritual On a high peak somewhere above the Volcanian Plains, a ghost ship was barely, barely visible sailing inward to Black Sand's shores. Although the ship appeared deserted and it was crewed by spectral ghosts, and captained by a man so ruthless and bloodthirsty, hell itself spat him back out. Long ago, the ship, the crew and its cargo were cursed to sail the seas for all eternity and never to be able to return to port. The current ruler of Volcania, Captain Flameheart, has forever been angry and distraught about how the other races were always at war. However, this only led him to despair. He drove the ancient people and the three ashen lords out of Volcania and banished them for what he now calls his land. Thus, the great brethren court was broken once again into lost pieces. The location of the ancients and their masters was unknown. However, somewhere hidden away, many people are on the brink of finding the answer. Meanwhile, in the throne room of Fort Frost, the Ice Prince held his treasured ch Charlie, ch chalice of unbreakable water and sighed as he knew that nothing would ever quench his forever parched throat. He shouted at Edgar, his assistant advisor, to light the beacons. A few minutes later, the Sapphire Gem of Power was activated and it shot a beam of light towards the Elven Kingdom to the east. In response to the Elf Throne, the green stone at the Volcanian Tower where the red gem should have been, but it was missing. The ritual was failed once again. However, the Ice Prince has been mindlessly trying to, trying to perform it since the day the red gem was stowed away by the Ashen Lords. But there was what something the elves knew that none of the other races did. They knew the location of the ruby gemstone. Elrond, the king of the elves, was sat at the death chair of the deep underground, deep underground in the elven tree. He was once again pondering over the maps and charts he had claimed for himself after the Great Calamity. He is still yet to decipher the code, although the rewards will be great once it's achieved. His son, Longbow, was a skilled warrior and yields the second weapon of strength, the Willow Bow. The others, the Stormlander, the Cryoblade, the Trident of Dark Tides, the Magma Staff, and the Ice Wand, are split among the other regions. Longbow was strolling through the boreal landscape of the Forest of Spirits. Golden brown leaves scattered the floor and long brown vines hung from above. Autumn was his favourite season, as this is when the wyverns migrate. He would watch as they shot past above him, barely visible through the canopy like flaming arrows. Just then, a wyvern sto stooped down and landed in front of L L Longbow. He drew his bow and sat on the ice arrow on the top of his fist, ready to strike. Before he had let the arrow leap forwards, he hesitated. The huge beast opened his mouth and let out a small shriek. It was just a young dragon that that had followed the others and seemed to have lost its way. Streaks of yellow, red and fiery orange were splashed across its wings like paint spilled from a bucket. Longbow had the gift of beast range. Beast tongue. Beast tongue from his father. The ability to talk to animals, he quietly rasped under his breath to the wyvern. Are you lost? The apparent youngster growled and gestured to an unmounted saddle on its back. It was firmly attached and couldn't have been pulled there by mistake. It was apparent to Longbow that it was not lost. Its rider was. There was a small satchel attached to the saddle. Longbow sneakily darted up the creature's back and opened it. There was a small scroll and a small pile of leaves. He unravelled the parchment and realised it was some kind of diary its previous owner must have kept. It went on about where he was going and how long he'd be travelling for. And then he mentioned what seemed like a name. Ember? With that, the beast turned its head, looking confused. I'll call you Ember, Longbow explained. Now I shall negotiate with my father, he said, looking down in realisation. He carefully mounted the great beast back as to not surprise it, and pulled on the reins for it to take off. Out of all the wyverns he'd ridden, this was the hardest. It was clearly not used for flying, and was swerving all over the place. He made his way up through the canopy and slowly headed back to the huge elf tree in the distance. So I will see you guys later. That is chapter one of Chronicles from Gorgoron. And yeah, very played out.